I'm not trying to brag, but I kind of have a banger today. I'm going to show you my brand new approach on setting up my video podcast. It's going to have multiple scenes, of course, but all of the graphic assets are actually going to be handled inside of OBS Studio. It's going to require me to only change one source between episodes. And I saved the best for last because I'm going to show you how I basically automatically edit my podcast while I'm recording without even touching my computer. Yes, that sounds like magic. But on top of that, I'm also going to show you how to do it for short form content in portrait mode. Also, at the same time, while recording, also without touching a single button. So sit back, relax, listen to this message from our sponsor, and then we can begin. <laughs> And today's sponsor is OWN Pro. You may know about OWN because of the ads mostly, and you know that they have the biggest overlay library on the internet. But OWN Pro is their service that aims to give you everything that you need as a streamer, including access to those overlays. So basically how it works is that it is an OBS plugin that you control from the website. All you have to do is log in with your Twitch account, install the plugin and configure it here. If I wanna configure alerts, for example, I can click configure here, then I can check out their alerts library. You might know that they have exclusive library license overlays from the Call of Duty franchise, but we're interested in the free stuff. Let's click on this, for example, and this is an example of the alert that we can get. And once you have the plugin installed, you just have to click install and boom, your alerts will look like this. And installing overlays is just as easy. Just click overlays, pick the one you want, tis the season, and just click install and they'll be ready to use in your OBS studio. Own Pro offers way more stuff, but I'll let you check it out by going to own.gg slash pro. That is O-W-N-3-D.gg slash pro. So I know in my podcast, I'm not gonna have more than one guest at a time. So let's start with step one, capturing the guest and I. So we're gonna start by creating two scenes. First one is going to be camera me, and the other one is going to be camera guest. I'm gonna be running the podcast through Discord, so let's open it up. Okay, so I'm on Discord right now with my guest, as you can see. Hi. And we can start with the window capture. So back in OBS where it says cam me, I'm gonna go ahead and find a window capture right there. Call it me camera. Immediately it knows that I wanna capture Discord. We're going to not capture the cursor and we're gonna click okay. From there, I can hold alt on my keyboard to crop and I'm gonna crop it pretty close. And then I'm gonna scale it up to fill the screen basically. Now this specific method loses a lot of quality. So what I'm actually gonna do during my podcast is have a webcam for Discord for the guest and then use the good camera here as the me camera. And since we have separate scenes, all I will have to do is just add a video capture source. We can further crop it to make it even tighter. There we go and do the same thing for the guest. To compensate the quality loss for the guest, I'm actually going to right click, go to filters and add a sharpen filter. Sharpen, click OK. Then I'm going to drag this until it seems relatively sharp. 0.8 is actually not bad. Of course, the bitrate is horrible because of my internet. <laughs> now we can go ahead and create the scenes that we actually want. First one is me plus guest. We're going to click and drag to bring this up. Second one is me alone, bring it up. Third one is guest alone, bring it up. Now we can add our captures as scenes. So plus scene, we're gonna want my camera, crop it a little bit. And I know that I wanna be over here. I'm gonna crop it like this. I'm actually gonna scale it down a little bit, maybe crop it down, holding alt to crop by the way. And we're gonna place it around here. Now we can add the guest scene cam guest. The guest should be kind of centered <laughs> just like that. And I'm gonna crop as well from both sides and I'm just gonna set it up. Me alone, we're gonna do the same, do the same for the rest. You can also right click, transform if you wanna center something and go to center to screen, but just press control D. And the reason why I have it cropped like this, even when they're alone is because I wanna show a little bit of personality, a little bit of graphic design, and this is what brings us to the assets. And we're actually gonna keep it extremely simple. We want one video playing in the background. That's probably going to be with a lower opacity. And then we want some custom name tags that will actually have a video as a background. In order to get said videos, we're going to go to pexels.com. This is where you can find a lot of Creative Commons videos that you can use in your projects as long as you credit the creators. I went ahead and typed abstract and we're looking for something that catches our eye. I really like this one because of the minimal amount of movement. So we're going to download it. So the credit goes to Steph with an F on Pexels. Back in OBS Studio, we want to add this as a media source and call it background, browse, find it. And we're gonna make sure we click loop so it plays back again. We're gonna drag it at the bottom. Actually, wait, <laughs> we're gonna do some modifications a little bit. We're gonna right click, go to filter. If you don't have any plugins, you can go to color correction and play around with the colors that way. You can play with the hue shift and also with the saturation, or you can play with all of the options really. 
I'm gonna lower the saturation and then for color multiply, I wanna put some sort of purple because that is kind of the branding, okay? If you wanna lower the opacity, that's also here. It's gonna be in the background, so basically it's gonna be darker. Let's click close and let's drag this at the bottom. All right, I'm satisfied. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna copy this, then I'm gonna go on my other scenes, right click and paste reference. Drag it down, right click, paste reference. Drag it down. Okay, let's do the name tag, except we're gonna use the exact same file. I'm gonna click plus media source. I'm gonna call this tag back and put the same file. Loop, nice, click okay. Now I'm gonna scale it down and then crop it to the size that I want. Then I'm gonna go to filters, add another color correction filter. This time I wanna keep the saturation. Color add, I'd like to put purple, but a darker one. Then color multiply, I wanna add cyan. Play a bit more with the purple. Okay, pretty good. I'm gonna lower the opacity slightly, just like that. So basically, in case what you're saying is boring, people will have something to, to look at. <laughs> Probably lower the opacity a bit more. There you go, about 75%. Then I'm gonna duplicate this, right click, copy, paste, reference. Okay, it's time to add the name tags, plus add a text source. And if people wanna show like a specific tag from a specific social media, you can add an image source with, a, with an icon. You can select the font and change it if you want. Let's go with Montserrat Regular, one of my favorite fonts. Let's click OK and let's place this. Everything you already placed, you can actually lock them so you don't accidentally move them. Then you can duplicate the text, right click, copy, paste, and you want a duplicate. You do not want a reference. The difference is that you can modify a duplicate without affecting the first one. I'm gonna rename this to guest name. I pressed F2 to rename it. And I'm probably gonna keep it all the way up like that because that's probably the only thing that's gonna be changing per episode. You know, the only change I need to do between episodes. Then we're gonna move it around. We're gonna change the text. Let's say that that day I'm interviewing a famous content creator called your mom. If we double click on the text, we can add a slight outline or we can use like a shader filter plugin to add a drop shadow. Let's go with outline in case you don't have a color. We want that to be black. Lower the opacity a little bit. And that way it's kind of like a drop shadow, but it's so subtle. It actually separates it from the background a little bit more. Do the same thing here. Outline, black, lower the opacity and we're good. Now we just need to add the tags to the other scenes. So what you could do is group them, for example. And then this goes with this. I'm gonna select, pressing control, right click, group selected items, tag me. Select tag back here and tag guest name, right click, tag guest. Collapse them, select tag me, right click, copy, me alone, right click, paste, reference. This one, we want reference. Because if we modify something in the first one, most likely we want to, to modify it on the second one, okay? Go back, right click, and copy the guest tag. Guest alone, we want to right click, paste, reference. So now, if I change the name of the guest from any of those scenes, it's going to update. Let's test it. Click OK. So that's in our first scene. And me alone, it's me alone. And guest alone, boom, there it is. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the assets. Now we're gonna make it look a little bit better. For example, rounding the rectangles would be fantastic. I'm actually gonna start with the tags. Tag guest, I'm gonna right click. And in this case, we're gonna be using the shader filter plugin. Click plus, user defined shader, click okay. Load shader from text file, browse, and we want rounded rectangle or something. Just rounded rectangle dot shader, corner radius 18. And I like that look. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna right click and copy it. Click close, go to tag me, right click filter, right click paste. Boom, that simple. And guess what? Since we copy pasted references, it is now applied to the rest. Pretty easy. Now let's say that I don't like the background for those, right? I can go there, go to tag back, go to filters. I can play around with it. Will it affect both? Yes, it will. That's the power of references. So let's say I wanna lower the brightness. Change the purple a little bit. Nice. While I'm at it, let's perfect our text. We want, to, we want it to be coming from the middle. We want it to be centered. Alignment here, I'm gonna put center. Text transform, I might want uppercase. Maybe that looks better, I'm not sure. Now, if we want a rounded rectangle around our cameras, we can go here and click filters, but I believe we will run into a problem. The problem being that we cropped it. So if I right click, I still have this one. Yes, I do. You're gonna see that it crops the whole thing, but none of it is appearing here. So let's remove that. And I believe there's another method, but I can't remember. So we're just gonna group this one, call it guest, open the filters, right click, paste. There we go. We have a little bit of rounded rect rectangles, but maybe we want it to be a little more visible. So let's go 25, click away. There you go. Same thing for my camera, right click, group, 
filters, right click, paste. Uh, it was 25, that's it. You can do the same thing for the other scenes. And there we have it. I'm definitely gonna be playing around with it more to make it look a little bit better, but this is the basis of it. Now, we can get into the fancy stuff. In order to avoid too much work when I'm recording, something that I love to do is basically edit while recording. So while the podcast is going on, I wanna do my cuts, I wanna do anything that I think that I'm gonna add later on in the video. So the easiest way to do that is to use your keyboard. You can go to settings and then you go to hotkeys and then you set up keyboard shortcuts to basically switch scenes. Under each scene, you're gonna have a switch to scene and then you can just set up a keyboard shortcut. Let's go with Alt-1 for me plus guest, Alt-2 for me alone, then Alt-3 for guest alone. Click apply and now we can switch without having to click, all right? You can also set the scene transition here, but usually for things like that, you don't really want to transition. I guess we can put a, a fade. It needs to be very, very short, 300 milliseconds. I don't like it, very old school. The second way of doing that, now maybe you don't want to type on your keyboard while you're talking or anything like that. The second way of doing that would be to use something like uh, an Elgato Stream Deck and uh, we can create a new profile. And basically it's um, a keyboard shortcut, hotkey right there, like we just set it up in OBS Studio. I can set this one and I can click to assign and I can press Alt 1. I can copy this, paste it, click here. This one's going to be Alt 2, right click, paste, and then Alt 3. So now I can basically press on my stream deck and you'll see that it's changing the scenes without having to use both hands. <laughs> well, just pressing with one hand. If you also have a stream deck pedal, which I actually have, you can also set that up. Same thing, hotkey, you can see it here. Boom, boom, boom. Then just press the hotkeys and it'll do it. In fact, I wonder if I can press the hotkeys in order to set the hotkey by clicking hotkey here. Yep, <laughs> I'm pressing the ones from the other profile and it's working. But that's only kind of fancy. One thing that I thought is, what if I didn't want to press a button? What if there's an important moment and I actually forget to press the button? Or maybe I'm saying something and then my guest reacts and I don't have the, the mental capacity to, to anticipate that they're gonna react, so I don't press the button. What if it could be automatic based on sound? Just like we have, you know, I believe Skype, uh, Zoom, they have this thing where whoever's talking basically is gonna be focused. What if I could do this with my scenes? That's when I downloaded something called Advanced Scene Switch. Switcher. I'll probably make a video on it, but I just got it, so I don't know much about it yet. All I know is if I go to tools and I have advanced scene switcher, you have to download and install that. I can create some macros. It has this little yellow thing because it's not running right now. It's inactive, which is fine. So we're going to create a macro. Let me place this somewhere you can see. Okay. And I'm going to click on the little plus here. That's glowing green conveniently. Macro one. And this one is basically, hey, if my volume goes above a certain amount here. Make sure that me alone is the scene that we see. So under macro one, we're gonna click on the plus here. It's gonna create this if statement basically. And under scene, we're gonna go to audio. So if audio output volume of my mic is above, and I'm speaking here, we can see that when I'm pretty loud and stuff like that, it goes around 30 or something. Then at the bottom, what do you do? What does it do? Switch scene, yes switch program no <laughs> switch scene to me alone using transition if you want but cut is fine i guess that's gonna be the default here there is wait until transition is complete but that is if you have a long transition which we don't we have cut so we can probably rename this into me like that's me that's me that's my audio create another one and call it guest or don't call it anything i don't care <laughs> and now if the audio of my guest, which I'm probably gonna be capturing through my desktop audio. If you have, you know, a fancy mixer or whatever, which I, I have, I just don't use that. It's gonna be desktop audio for me, whatever. You pick the source that your guest is gonna be coming from. Goes above, hopefully 25-ish, pretty much the same as the other one. Then in this case, what I want you to do is switch to guest alone. Using a cut, using a cut. And that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> That is pretty much it. So it's hard to kind of test it while showing you, but it's kind of hard to demonstrate if I'm not actively using it, but check it out. So go to general and now you want to start it and click start. It is now active. Auxiliary audio is here. Desktop audio, there's no one, but let's say that I go to another scene and I'm going to talk and it's going to switch it automatically. Talking. You see this? Do you see this? Do you understand the potential? Now, uh, we just need someone else to be talking. I'm going to mute my mic and I'm going to unmute the mic over here and I'm going to talk. 
see what that does. I'm, I need to unmute my desktop audio here, of course. Okay, I have desktop audio <laughs> muted. No, wait, it's, wait, what? Oh, it doesn't care if I mute them on OB, in OBS. I didn't know that. So now it's, <laughs> it's hearing me twice. Wait, what if, what happens now? Testing. Testing. <laughs> okay. It's battling each other because it's technically listening to me on both. <laughs> and when you want to stop it, you just stop it. So this might be the most plausible thing that I'm going to do during the podcast is actually like if I want to show both of us, I'll probably like have this on a side on my other monitor. And then whenever we're in a deep conversation and I just want to switch back and forth, I'll just click start and then it'll stop list. It'll start listening and then doing the switching automatically. So that was the automation part. Cool. We won't have to really edit our video, at least not when it comes to switching scenes. Oh, by the way, have you guys heard of this AI thing that basically does this on your like while editing your video, it's a plugin for Adobe Premiere, I think. And it goes and it actually chops up the video and then switches scenes. You don't need that anymore. You can just do this. <laughs> the other most important thing, apart from editing the video itself, is the short form content. The horizontal, is it horizontal? No, the vertical, <laughs> the vertical videos, the portrait videos. And for that, we're going to use Adam Vertical, which is an OBS plugin that allows you to create content in vertical in OBS Studio at the same time. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go to Docs. So I have it installed in all of that. I have videos on that. You can go check it out. And I'm going to go find a vertical something, vertical, just vertical. Cool. Oh, it's telling me I have an update. Great. Uh, is it just not going to work? It should. So while I'm recording, I can set it so that I can record the whole podcast also in vertical, just in case there's a specific part, then I won't have to do the placement part. I will just have to edit the specific part, but there's also something called backtrack clip. So during the podcast, if there's a moment that is clip worthy, I can still do it and have it in short form, basically ready to go as soon as the podcast is over. Actually, it's ready to go during the podcast, but let's go here and you're going to see that I have my vertical scenes and I'm going to have my vertical sources and I'm going to add new scene, for example, and I'm going to add a scene. The cool thing here is that we can add all of the scenes. We can have like a cleaner look without all the fancy stuff that we added. And in that case, we would add something like cam me and then cam guest at the bottom, right? Boom. And you have your setup. You can also crop to make sure it looks good. That simple. Or you can add the scenes with all the assets. Me alone, for example, you could add that. Now the question is, can I add this tag in the middle? for example, on TikTok, for example, the setup would probably be something like this really fill the screen as much as possible. And yes, Adam thought of that. You can right click here, go add, and you actually have something called group. And we're going to have tag me. Now you have your own tag here and you can place it. All of that. You're basically doing your, your short form edit already in the podcast. Well, while recording before recording, actually, <laughs> one thing that you can do is you can right click on one of your scenes here. And you can link the scenes, meaning that vertical scene two is me alone, right? We should probably rename this vertical me. So right click, go to link scene and then me alone. Vertical guest, I'm going to right click, link scene. I'm going to have guest alone. And I want you to pay attention. Vertical me, cool. Now let me click on guest alone on my main thing. Do you see what's going on? Those are links. So when they switch, they also switch on the vertical video. I should probably center this better. So to make it complete, let's create another scene that's going to have the both of us, both of us. So this is very like TikTok format. I'm going to right click and then link them to me plus guest. And now we have a fully functional, automatic vertical and landscape podcast going on. I like, this is my first time actually setting it up. I knew it was going to work, but it's something else to actually set it up and watch it. So, <laughs> so there's two options. Again, you can either record on both at the same time. So you're pretty much ready. You're going to have your hours long po podcast on in both formats, or you can use the backtrack during the podcast to basically have some clips that are ready to go. I am most likely going to record with both at the same time. Hopefully my OBS doesn't crash while I'm doing that. I'll definitely be testing it. Now the question is, since those are linked, would the advanced scene switcher still work? And this is the moment of truth, ladies and gentlemen, and non-binary friends. Of course it does. <laughs> of course it does. But I know how to test this. I need to just lower this 
Ah, uh, and then ah. Uh, <laughs> I can probably just override them. Right click, transition override, cut. Right click, transition override, cut. There we go. <laughs> no editing. No editing. A good workflow. You can just push out your podcast. Of course, you, you kind of have to edit. I have an intro for my podcast and everything. I'll probably get rid of it, but still. There's also some cool options here, such as automatically start the scene switcher when you're recording. When you're recording or streaming or when you're streaming, blah, blah, blah. And it says here, hotkeys can be defined in the OBS settings. So that means that, and we're going to see if that's true. We should have an option to basically start the scene switcher without having to go to tools and opening it up. Start the advanced scene switcher right there. Stop the advanced scene switcher. So this is something that I can set with my keyboard or my Elgato stream deck or my stream deck pedal. I don't know why I've like, I'm so impressed with this. I came up with the idea, but I have it. It's here. It's completed. Okay. To wrap it up, the other things that I have in mind were probably like effects from the shader filter plugin. I made a video covering all of the effect that come with it. So there's a whole list of cool things you could be doing. There's also the move plugin, which you could be using to actually move things around instead of cutting it could move the guest away and then my camera would take the, the whole shape of the whole thing in a smooth way. I made a video on how to do that. And honestly, as a concept, it's pretty cool, but I ended up deciding that it was maybe too distracting. If someone is reacting quick, you don't want people to be stuck in a transition, seeing things move around. You just want them to see the person reacting or saying whatever they're saying. I also do realize that there is, there seem to be like a frame. It doesn't do it all the time, but sometimes there's a frame that skips. I think it's the window capture basically shutting off and then back on sometimes. If I don't want that, I wonder if a very, very short fade would fix it. So it doesn't get rid of it totally, but it's better. It feels smoother. 100 millisecond fade. That's fine. I'm willing to live with that. And that's how you properly set up a video podcast using OBS Studio. If you have any questions, if you have any cool ideas, Ideas, leave them in the comment section below. Make sure you check out my podcast channel, just get level talks. It's probably going to be different from what I showed you here because that was my first setup and I'm probably going to spend way more time making it look and feel the way I want. And also follow me on Twitch if you like talking about content creation. That being said, go out there, make me proud, get level, out.